Hi lovelies and welcome to the witch's cookery. Wonderful spring weather has arrived, the layers get less and less, the dresses get shorter, social gatherings, barbecues, picnics and whatnot are also kind of like starting up again. In two short weeks the outdoor pool in my town is finally opening up again and that also means it's kind of time to lose the winter fluff. And yes, I do gain winter fluff every year because I like to hibernate and be cozy and you know just go with the flow and with the seasonal energies. Which also means that when spring rolls around. I am filled with a desire to build up my energy levels again, to move more, to be outside in the sun more and to also fit in all the cute dresses that are in my closet. So today I am going to share with you how I use my witchcraft practice to get in shape, get fit and get well. And here we're not only talking about losing weight, we're actually talking about feeling great in your skin, finding motivation, spells and ritual that set your mind, your body and your spirit up for success in those areas, the power of magic routines, kitchen witchery to nourish your body and soul and of course as I personally see witchcraft as a spicy psychology, all the stuff that needs to happen in here before anything can happen here. Wow, I don't have sweaty pits. I do like the material of this. How nice. How nice. All right, back to topic. Celebrate the little wins, right? So if you're looking to move your body more, to shed some weight or gain some muscle, if you're looking to just feel better about yourself, feel confident and care well for you, this is the video for you with a lot of witchy tips on how to bring more magic into your mundane. Now, first things first. <laughs> This is your reminder to go and hydrate. A lot of how we feel in our skin, what our body looks like and how it functions, which again also in its totality affects on how we feel mentally, is influenced by four main factors. How and where we move our body, how much rest we grant it, what we put in our body and how we talk and think about it. Starting with movement and doing all the physical work that needs to go in getting into shape. Motivation to work out or just even move is often hard to come by. We know what we want and on paper we know what we have to do to get there, but we might also feel exhausted by life and responsibility and our schedule, so we don't really feel like, oh, after work let's let's go and do something for my stupid health. So how can we trick ourselves into actually doing the doings? Take the pressure off, make it fun, make it something that you want to do. Now technically going on a walk or doing sports is me time, right? It's something that you do only for you and for your health and you invest in yourself and if that's motivation enough for you that is great, go and do it. But maybe you're one of those people for whom it feels more like a chore or something that you have to do, not something that you really look forward to doing, that you want to do. So make it that. And how can we do that in a witchy way? Well we can ritualize it. That goes for workouts, that goes for nutrition, that goes for self-care. Make it something relaxed me time that you look forward to do. How that looks like is completely up to you, your preferences and your style of magic. So for example, before you start your workout, your yoga session, your walk, you could sit down and first set your intentions. Ask yourself, what do I want to achieve? What energy do I want to call in with that? Do I want to push myself? Do I want to experience movement? Do I want to cleanse and clear my head? Run and sweat it all out until I leave all the stress of every day behind? And then pick a music that gets you in the mood. Maybe you can even light some candles. A workout doesn't have to be only in the gym or like sweating while you watch some YouTube influencer half the size of you do jumping checks, right? Do it more slow, do it more fun, listen to your body while you do the exercises. It's not about harder and faster and all of that, it's about enjoying what you're doing. Picking your workout clothes in a color, color magic that brings power in red or orange maybe or yellow for fun or if you want to have a more spiritual experience by doing yoga, maybe something purple, whatever you know the colors mean to you. Light some incense if you like, cleansing the space and your thoughts first before you start into that or cleansing away limiting beliefs like I am not sporty, I am not strong enough to do this. Take that sage or whatever you use and you know, shoo it out 
out the window first. While you work out, you can also use this in a meditative way. While you do exercises that might be hard or challenging for you, monitor the thoughts that come up in your head and just observe, what am I feeling? What am I thinking right now? Am I thinking, oh, I will never be this good? Or am I feeling, this is really hard, but I know I can do it. I'm too old for this. I'm not mobile enough. Do your shadow work with that, with the thoughts that come up and like observe them and learn something from it and also with that see where limiting beliefs are, where unconscious negative affirmations live in your heart and in your mind that are actually hindering you getting in the best shape you could be in. When you're done, pause in meditation after and let it sink in. What this does is it doesn't only provide you with a long-term goal like getting fit, but it actually shifts the focus on a more immediate purpose and intention and a short-term goal, so to speak, that you can immediately reap the benefits from in the moment, which is wildly motivating. Getting satisfaction and a dopamine boost right then and there. You see effects that don't have to wait until you actually reach your end goal. What I love to do, especially if I'm doing cardio exercises where I'm just on a bike or on a treadmill or anything indoors, I like to draw a tarot or oracle card as my little message. I either use then this for a meditation or I use the card as the energy that I want to channel or bring in. For example, I see it as the energy that I'm now drawing from the deck of cards and that is now living in my heart. And with that word in mind, I do my exercises. Being very gentle and slow or being full of power and determination and pushing my limits. If you're a little witchy planner, you can bring in all sorts of correspondences to trick you into making workouts and stuff like that fun. For example, working with the moon phases while the moon is waxing. You can work mainly on building muscle and strength exercises while it's waning. Maybe you want to work more on cardio or losing weight. On a full moon, you look back at the results that you have gained. And when it's in that dark moon phase, you take a proper rest day, do rest and recharge rituals. And on the new moon, just try something completely new. One little spell that I personally love to do, and not only for working out or getting in shape, but also for example, self love and self-care is candle magic. Now what I do is that I take a really big long candle and I take a little knife and I carve different markings in the candle and each of those markings gets a name depending on what I want to achieve. You could obviously put like a certain size or a weight there if you're on a weight loss journey or a certain fitness goal if you're building towards something. Personally I like to go more with how I want to feel when the candle reaches this level, right? The level of contentment, of fitness, of health, of less stress, whatever it might be. Because when we're working on our wellness and fitness, the feelings come much earlier than the actual results. Just by those lifestyle changes, by being active, by nourishing your body, by being kind to your own mind, they set in a bit earlier than, for example, numbers on the scale. So what this little candle spell does is adding some magic to tracking your mundane efforts. Every time I, for example, do a workout at home or I eat in a ritualistic or witchy way, I light that little candle for the duration that takes. First of all, that already gives me some sort of focus point. It makes it more magical. It makes it more intentional and not only, oh, I have to do that now, but more of a, okay, this is now time for me. And I snuff that candle out when I'm done and then I can just track how I get to that feeling while well, that energy and intention gets fueled into the universe if you want. For a lot of people getting into or getting back into witchcraft, it's also about reconnecting with your inner child. The part of yourself that you have shoved away or trimmed in a bit to fit more into your adult self. The part of yourself that is very playful, that's unplagued by society's norms and expectations. The part that enjoyed doing their little potions with leaves and mud. The part that imagined fairy living in the woods. Or the part that dreams about dancing in a flowy white dress underneath the moonlight. Uh, speaking of dancing, I always was a little dancer, tap dance in Irish, but I always had a 
passion for ballet. Now, even while I was at my fittest and skinniest, I don't necessarily have the physique or height of a ballerina. I'm much too tall and I just have too much trunk space, if you know what I mean. At least that is what I let myself believe when I was younger and so I kind of gave up on a dream and I was like, well, it's for other people, not for me. Now that my son has started with ballet, it kind of like sparked that idea in me again. And I was like, why? It's such a good sport. It's healthy, it's amazing for your posture, it's great for reducing stress if you don't take it as a way to become like a pro or be super perfectionistic about it, but just see it as a way to have fun and listen to great music and move your body and like train cardio strength and you know flexibility at the same time. So I did let my inner child take the wheel and I was like we are going to get a really nice little flowy type of outfit and we are going to stand on a bar and do what we can and just flounce around the room like a little fairy princess, okay? We don't need to go on point and we don't have to bend our leg behind our ears. And oh my god, I go to training now twice a week. It is fantastic. I have so much fun. It's so good for my overall health. So what I want to share with this is you find yourself not doing something because some part of you believes that you were not made for it or you don't have a place in it because of X, Y, Z, even though you feel a pull and an interest towards it. For the sake of delighting your inner child, give it a whirl. And this is not only in terms of movement or a specific sport, obviously. I mean, it's also in terms of wearing what you like, regardless of your body shape. Doing whatever makes you feel more the authentic you. The you that you secretly are or that you used to be or that you wish to be. Don't underestimate the magic in following your passions and your choice. And having this experience of using your body for something that is fun also changes your way of thinking, which again, big, big, big influence on how you see your body and how you treat your body. To value and see your body more as a vessel, as a ship that carries you through life and gives you a whole array of experiences and fun moments and not something that has to be beat into submission to look a certain way, to do certain things. It really furthers your self-love too. So that magical little child in you, let it out. And as we're talking about movement and finding the right movement and the stuff that brings you joy, do the things that you actually like. I have an entire home gym with like weights and equipment and kettlebells in there. Do I enjoy that type of workout? Uh, no. Would I train in there? Uh, no. Partly also because I think the ceiling will fall down any second, but uh, mainly it's because I don't want it, so I won't do it. I want to combine the things that I need to do with the things I want to do. I have a huge interest in everything magical witchy folklore. I love all the magical and spiritual sites that we have here in the south of Germany. Old trees, rock formations, castles and historic places or buildings that are entwined in folk belief and I love to go there, left to hike there and move my body there in the sun, in the air. If that is an interest of your two, combine the two and do a little witchy hike. Maybe you can even do a little spell there or gather some herbs. And even if it's just about finding places of power, and with that I mean places where you kind of like feel magical or at peace or you just feel that they refill your heart in your city, if that's just a park bench five minutes from your home, go there. At least you have moved outside and you had sunshine and you had fresh air and the alternative is not having that and just sitting in your apartment, the first one, even if it's only five minutes, gives you a huge benefit to body and mind that will determine the rest of your day, your mood and your motivation. Now in spring and summer as a little green witch, I love to forage, I love to plant my garden. So that is also a lot of extra movement my body gets. But I also definitely know how hard it is to find time for movement. Most of my job is sitting at a desk and doing boring admin work or being creative, writing stuff and not moving at all. And that oftentimes for hours and hours and hours and hours in a day. Obviously I consume a lot of social media too and I saw a couple of those influencers having their like walking pads and a standing desks and being like all boss babe hey let's like work out while I work and I was always like this kind of looks interesting and I wish I could do that because I feel like I would benefit a lot from it but I was like am I really going to walk while I work does that work and then walking pad which is a company that produces exactly those things reached out to me and they were like hey can we send you like the the little treadmill and I was like well if you throw in a walking desk yes please <laughs> and I have this thing now for four weeks 
and the way it changed my life. I cannot rave enough about it. I already mentioned it on Instagram and now you might be thinking like, oh my God, she's really hyping this up. They must be paying her a fortune. It's actually not sponsored. I do have an affiliate link though for you and a discount code that you can apply, but I'm just so excited about this thing. It's super compact, it's foldable, like it literally comes out of the box like that. You just fold it open and you can start your workout. You don't have to do anything else. It carries weight until 135 kilos and I believe that's 300 pounds and it does goes up quite a long way. I'm 180 and if I put it on a higher setting, it's technically too high for me. It just is so cool for all the creative work that I have to do because if I'm sitting at my desk and I'm writing a meditation or I'm writing a new witchy workshop, I often get like in a creative type of like blockage or slump and then I just start to scroll Instagram because my body is already kind of in a relaxing sitting position. I don't have that if I stand at my window and I'm walking on a walking path and just jot down ideas as they come. My body kind of like keeps in that flow. I can look into the clouds, I can watch the birds. It just makes me a thousand times more creative and productive. I use it on calls and meetings where I have more of a listening role, even though it's really not loud and not to compare with like a treadmill in the gym noise wise. And you can do anything on there from like strolling around to like listening to music and you know dancing a little bit or making those cool model TikTok thingies where they keep on walking with their cute outfits. But it does go up to six kilometers an hour so a brisk speed is definitely also possible while you're watching TV or listening to an inspiring podcast. <laughs> As you can see I'm working in a crawl space. I'm really cutting it close with the headphones and the desk but I still use it because at nine in the morning I already have my 10k steps in and I work better. Plus I can do some in my pajamas and socks. <laughs> it removes already some of the friction that you have to first like put on your workout gear before you do anything for your body. I'll leave you my affiliate link down below so you can check it out plus the code which gets you 160 euro and 160 US dollar off should you decide to give it a try. The desk is also fairly easy to build even though I didn't do it myself. I made my partner do it. <laughs> but he gets to move his body too. How selfless. So now after I raved about this you're probably like yeah but I don't even want to get on that treadmill or you know start have the motivation to start doing anything where I have to move my body from the comfort of my couch. Absolutely understandable but luckily there's a witchcraft for this and I have two practical spells for you. One is a little bit of Korean witchery the other one dips into chaos magic. Let's start with the latter. I am a big fan of sigil magic. If you don't know what a sigil is, how to make one or how it even works, I recommend checking out a video I made a while ago but it's very extensive on the information. I'm gonna link it for you down below. But if you know what a sigil is or you've now caught up, let me explain how you can apply this in order to get in your best shape, to get fit, to work out, to eat right, whatever you wanna, you know, fuel it with. I need to pee so bad. Another sip of water so it's worth it. Did you drink enough? Okay, then do it now. I am back. <clears throat> so you sit down in a quiet moment and you first reflect on what do I want to achieve and why do I want to achieve it? So it's clear for you in your head what you're going after and what it will bring you because the what it will bring you is the motivation, the drive, the really kicks you into gear when you know it's hard to follow all the mundane shit to reach your dream manifestation. Find and visualize a clear picture of you, how you will be when you feel your best physical, mental, fit self. Visualize you on your end goal, wearing that lovely dress that you haven't fitted into in a really long time or crossing the line of your marathon or, you know, lifting that weight or feeling great and victorious because you climbed the three flights to your apartment. Your personal individual goal. Once you have that visual in your head, go into the feeling. How will you feel? Are you happy? Are you strong? Are you energetic? Are you lean? Are you confident? Take this energy, this power, this drive, whatever it is, and sum it up in a sentence or in a word, and then transform the sentence or this word into a sigil. Again, check out the video. There are a thousand ways to do a sigil. Usually for me, when I do that, I like to go for more of a symbolic one. I don't play so much with the letters, but I play more with the shape of the sigil, if that makes sense for you. While you draw your sigil, you can already charge and channel all that energy into it, fueling all your hopes 
and dreams in it. And then personally what I like to do is to put that sigil where I need it most. If it's about nourishing my body correctly, I will put it on the fridge. If it's about finding working out motivation, I put it somewhere where I need that jump start. Or if it's about endurance, I might put it on my treadmill so I know, hey, you can go a mile further. And then every time I wish to have more motivation or endurance, I look at that sigil and I'll touch it for a second, close my eyes and feel that energy flowing into me, like the thing that I wanna be. And it just motivates me to do that shit. And then after I'm done, I touch it again to charge it with that extra generated energy that I just got by making a wonderful, nutritious kitchen bitch delight or by doing a sweaty workout or whatever it was to have it charged up for the next time I need it. Doing this every time also trains your brain to immediately associate it with that. So even now by looking at it, you might be more motivated to work in the mundane on your desires. For a bit of green witchery, I love to do this either as a way to give my body more rest or to enhance my endurance during workouts. And that's just by simply crafting a little body oil or body mist. You can fill them in those little like roller bottles that you can apply on your wrists or on your neck, on your temples, or spritz it around the room for more power. I might put in citrus, I might put in ginger, fire spices, cinnamon, cardamom, all of that stuff. Or if I wanna use it more, if I need calm and remind my body to also rest or to sleep at a proper time, I might put in chamomile, lavender, lemon balm or frankincense. When you make it, play around with magical and mundane correspondences. Might even play around with charged up moon water if you want or crafting it during a certain time in the cycle under the new moon to charge it up with that seed of new intentions and beginnings. The full moon for abundance and high energy. This hack would also work for example as a little simmer pot that you craft with that intention during your ritualized workout for example. When it comes to physical well-being and physical fitness. Also have to talk about our brain and what's happening in our mind because oftentimes what we believe up here, what we do up here, what we think up here has a huge effect on how we take care of ourselves. To throw some words into the room you might know of emotional eating, stress eating, drinking, smoking or other unhelpful coping mechanisms like scrolling endlessly at night at your phone on social media. All the things that we are titling bad habits because they're not great for our body or for our mind or for our health in general. How do we tackle those and uncover why we do or don't do certain things. Shadow work or reflection is a big one that we can do within our witchcraft practice to discover things like, hey, do I maybe on some level not feel worthy of taking that time for myself and for that self-care? Do I feel like I first need to serve other people or my job or whatever it might be, my family? Or do I subconsciously believe that I will never reach a certain level or that I can look or feel a certain way. Or to get more aware of your triggers when you're suffering from something like emotional eating. What can you do in your witchy practice to help yourself? Again, sit down in reflection and meditation in a quiet moment. Here, of course, you can use journaling or prompted journaling, or we can also use things as tarot or oracle to feel out more the energy that we're sitting in in the moment while we are having certain desires or impulses and work through them before we act on them. And having that reflection tool of a card that you have just drawn from a deck is a great way to start conversation with your own brain and with your own heart to discover, hey, what is really going on and why am I not doing the things that will in this moment make me feel better, my body and my mind, but my brain is deciding to do something else that in the long term will make me feel worse. Now, one way my personal practice really has helped me with one of those things because I'm a huge stress eater is by developing a magical evening ritual. For me usually evenings are work 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 and then I get into the fridge and eat a packet of cheese because I'm like I will never be able to go to bed. My to do list is so long. At the end that doesn't fix any of my problems, it just makes me gassy. <laughs> Of course, the issue here is I cannot just pause my responsibilities or life. I still have to get my work done. But how do I get like the cheese out of the picture? So what I thought was, hey, obviously your body in that moment is like stressed. It actually needs sleep and it needs rest. So why don't we give your body rest in that moment? That means I'm actively stepping away 
from the computer. The routine looks as follows. I light a candle that signals me, okay, now it's magical time. I turn off all the lights and then I go with my little candle, like Jebediah Scrooge, how's it called? <laughs> It's not his name, you know who I mean. I go to the kitchen and make myself a tea and it's a tea blend. I especially craft it with that intention and with that purpose to have that relaxation. It's chamomile, lemon balm, and a little bit of valerian root. And while that is brewing, I get ready for bed. I do a little skin thing or brush my hair out, brush my teeth, something simple. And then I just sit in the dark, sip my tea, maybe listen to a meditation or to an audiobook or read a little bit, and then within half an hour I go to bed. Now obviously my work is still there, but what that does is it makes me able to wake up early in the morning, to be refreshed, and to be without that stress and to just do the work in the morning when my brain is like all awake and fresh and feels like I can tackle a new day. Now, of course, I wouldn't be the witch's cookery if I wouldn't mention nutrition and what you eat. What you put in your body is either fuel or poison, to break it down very simple. And it will affect you physically and mentally and have a huge effect on your energy levels throughout the day. Now, the great advantage in kitchen witchery is that we make food, the preparation of food and the eating of the food into something very focused and mindful. We're not just like throwing something together to stuff our face to like, you know, make the hunger go away or the feelings go away if you want, but we're taking the time to stir an intention into the food, to pick ingredients that will help with some goal that we have in mind. And ideally you can also sit down and again make the eating of it ritualistic, light a candle so you slow down you become mindful of the taste, of the flavor, of the scent. Make it an eating meditation where you really feel, hey, what is this sip of water right now doing to my body? How does it make my body feel? How is that plate of fruit making my eyes happy? Speaking as a witch, it might also deepen your connection with the natural world, nature, what it provides, the gratitude you might feel for the ingredients that are now on your plate and like all the effort and work that went into growing them and, you know, bringing them there where they are right now. If you let it, it can definitely change the relationship you have to food to a very positive one. That inspires you to eat more natural, more wholesome, and in a way that is useful for your personal physique. Now, how can we work kitchen vitri in very simple ways? For example, by taking a glass of water in the morning and charging it up with the energy that we wanna have, for example, for our morning walk. By coming up with a magical concoction that replaces drinks that are not that great for us, like too much coffee during the day or the glass or two of wine in the evening. If that's now a calming tea or a nutritious smoothie, water charged underneath the moon or from a special magical spring. I made this little wellness salt, how I called it, and this is basically how I spice up all my healthy food, my tuna, my eggs, eggs, my huge platter of fruit and veg, well not fruit because it's, it's salty. I'm gonna put you the link in the description box below, but it makes just everything better and more magical and I eat it with great pleasure and the intention of wellness in mind. You can also work with the elements and their correspondences and plants. If I want more energy, I might want to eat more of the fire related herbs, spices and fruit. Gingers, cinnamon, feel very stressed, I might want to have some grounding. So get some proper nice root vegetables in and make it into a nutritious yet very comforting food for yourself. Let's not forget your most powerful magical tool, which is, of course... No, it's not the elder wand, it's your brain. But good guess, good guess. This is where you create your magic that will make you feel good and do the doings. Morning affirmations in front of the mirror. You don't necessarily have to be like, I am the goddess, I am the most beautiful creature that ever walked this plane. If you don't believe it because you know that will probably not work but you can get there with the affirmations of like i am capable of being strong i am capable of doing a five minute walk i am worthy of fueling my body with good food today you can make your affirmations into a little mantra that you chant to yourself during the day when you need a little push or you know you make it into a spell maybe one that rhymes and you can feel like the little witchy poo that you are and also don't forget to focus on rituals and spell work that further self-love self-compassion self-care personal favorite 
I like to do herbal Epsom salt baths, especially after working out for the sore muscles. I just like to lay in the bath and then I just wanna be kind to my body by like lathering it up with soap and cleaning it. And then when I go through all the body parts, I also say to my body parts, I know it sounds cringe and weird, but it really helps. Say to them what you're grateful for. You can also do that in your head and if you don't want your family or neighbors listening to you raising the olfactory choice your left nostril brought you that very day tell your body parts what you're really grateful for today where your feet brought you what your eyes could see what your ears could hear what your belly was able to digest but everyone has all those body parts or have them functioning so you're actually pretty lucky if you do being kind to what you have even if it might not work in a way or look a way that you ideally would want to have is still super important just with a child you won't bully yourself into being your best self but you can love and guide yourself to become just that and last but not least what to keep in mind is sustainability all of these are great tips if they're useful to you if they work for you and if you can apply them you don't need to apply everything and for sure not everything at once take one little thing that you think oh i might give that a roll and see how it pans out for me and remember baby steps is the way to go you don't run a marathon by just like doing the thing you're building up towards it all of these things are somewhat connected as body mind spirit are connected and if we take good care of one of those things it will affect the other two too if we don't take good care of one of those things it might affect the other ones as well so making good choices for either body mind and spirit when it comes to feeling well being well getting in the best shape that you are will have effect on the other ones too. Pick the simplest thing, do it consistently, trust the process and grow from there. I hope this was helpful. I'll link you some more videos relating to this topic underneath in the description box and I shall see you very soon. Goodbye! Whew. Whew. Definitely a did break sweat here. Off in the shower I pop.